Hey everyone, my name is Anaya Raisingani and I am a developer advocate over here with MongoDB. Today I have a really great tutorial for you all on how to use AWS Lambda with PyMongo, MongoDB's Python driver. So AWS Lambda's paper execution model along with MongoDB's unparalleled scalability will really help developers understand what it's like to have their applications thrive without the hardware complexities they might normally be used to. This combination is great because instead of fussing over hardware complexities, developers are free to focus entirely on running and executing their applications. So this tutorial will take you through how to properly set up an Atlas cluster, how to connect it to AWS Lambda using PyMongo, how to write an aggregation pipeline on our data, and then how to return our wanted information. So let's get started. Our first step is to create an Atlas cluster. We are currently in the Atlas UI. Click the green Build a Database button. For this tutorial, we can use the M0 free tier. Please ensure that your provider is AWS and you are in the correct region. I'm going to be naming the cluster AWS Lambda Demo, and then we can hit Create. We will be taken to this page where we need to set a username and password. For this tutorial, I will use the username Mongo and then the password Mongo as well, but please ensure that you are using a secure username and password. Then hit Create User. I am going to add in Access from Anywhere, which is just 0.0.0.0, .0 but please keep in mind that this is not very secure for production. We do not recommend it. This is just for this demo. And then I'm going to hit Finish and Close. Once your cluster is up and running, we need to now load in our sample data set. Click the ellipses next to the Browse Collections and click on Load Sample Data Set. Once our cluster is fully provisioned, let's move on and set up our AWS Lambda function. Sign into your AWS account and either search for Lambda or click on the button that says Lambda. We are going to want to hit this orange create function button. And now we can see that we are in our create function area. We want to click the first one, which is author from scratch. And then we want to select a name for our function. I'm going to call mine AWS Lambda demo one. The runtime that I'm going to be using is Python 3.8. And then I'm going to keep the architecture the same. So now I can scroll down and hit the create function button on the bottom of the screen. Once your function is created, you will see a page with your function overview above and then your code source right below. Now we are ready to set up our connection from AWS Lambda to our MongoDB cluster. To make things easier for ourselves, because we are going to be using PyMongo, a dependency, instead of editing directly in the code source, we are actually going to be using Visual Studio Code. So AWS Lambda has a limited amount of pre-installed libraries and dependencies, so in order to get around this and incorporate PyMongo, we will actually need to package our code in a special way. Due to this workaround, this will not be a typical tutorial with testing at every single step. We will first have to download our dependencies and upload our code to Lambda prior to ensuring our code works instead of using a typical requirements.txt file. Now we are ready to establish a connection between AWS Lambda and our previously made MongoDB cluster. To do this, let's first access our terminal. And then we are going to create a new directory on our local machine. So I'm just going to do it on my desktop. So CD desktop. And then I'm going to do AWS Lambda demo. I'm going to name it demo1 to keep things consistent. And so now we need to install PyMongo. And as I said before, Lambda doesn't have every library available, so we need to download PyMongo at the root of our project. So we can do this by first entering the directory we just made, which will be cd aws lambda demo1. 
and then I'm going to make a new directory in here where all of our dependencies are going to live. So it's going to be make dir dependencies. And here's where I am going to install PyMongo directly in this new package. So this command is going to be pip install target dot slash dependencies and then pi mongo and then just hit enter once everything is downloaded we are now going to open up visual studio code so here i have visual studio code open and then the directory that we are working in which once again is aws lambda demo one so now that we're in here the first thing we're going to do is create a new python file and we are going to name it lambda function dot py so this is actually where the heart of our entire connection is going to be so let's create that first and now we are going to be doing import os and then from pymongo import mongo clients so the first thing we need to do is an establish a connection to our database that we created before so we're going to have mongo client and then host is equal to os dot environ dot get and then here we're going to have our atlas uri so i am going to be showing you all how to insert our environment variables at a later step so even if once we have this file done even if i run it um, it's not going to work just yet so now if you remember from before in the code source there's a little lambda handler definition so i'm going to copy that in with def lambda handler and then we have events and context and now I'm just gonna do the name of my database so here I'm going to be creating just to test our connection and make sure it's working I'm actually going to be creating a new database and then a new collection and they're both gonna have the name of test just to make things a little bit easier for us so this is the name of my database and then we're gonna have the name of our collection so this is going to be collection is equal to database test great and then inside of our little test database and collection I'm actually going to be inserting a document so this way when we check um, we will know for sure if we are able to write to our database after we run all of our code in AWS Lambda. So to do this, I am just going to document to include, and that's going to be document is equal to, and I'm just going to do my first name and then my last name. So this is going to be Anaya, and then last name, Raisingani, and let's make sure we have our brackets, fantastic, and then we are going to actually insert the document. So we're going to have results is equal to our collection dot insert one because we only have one document and then we need to make sure to specify document perfect and then we can just write a little just to know for a fact in AWS Lambda if it has actually been entered we can do just if result dot inserted ID and then return inserted and then else we can do um, return not inserted perfect let's save that 
Now that we have our lambda function, what we need to do is zip all of our dependencies together and then upload it to AWS Lambda and run it from there. As I mentioned before, we still have, we haven't inserted our Atlas URI or our connection string yet. So even if we run this, it's not going to work. So in order to run this properly, we first need to create a zip file. Um, and so we can do this actually at the root. So let's go back to our terminal and we can go with the command cd dependencies and then we can do zip r deployment dot zip perfect so we have cd into our dependencies directory and now we're going to do zip r dot dot deployment dot zip and then period to copy in everything Great, so this creates a deployment.zip file inside of our project directory. And so now we actually need to add in our lambda function.py file to the root of our zip file. So cd dot dot and then zip deployment.zip lambda function.py. Okay, so I spelled that wrong. <laughs> so let's fix that lambda function dot py perfect so now let's just check and make sure that we have our nesting properly made great this is what we should see we should see a dependencies folder um, our deployment dot zip file and then our lambda function dot py file so now we can actually go back to our lambda function and then we can click on upload from and hit zip file and then click upload and let's search for our AWS Lambda demo one and we want our deployment dot zip. So let's open it and then hit save. Awesome. So now we can see all of our code from our lambda function.py inside of our code source, which is awesome. So now we can actually go ahead and configure our environment variables. You can go up here and click on configuration, and we can click on environment variables, and we can add in our environment variable. So our key is atlas URI, and then our value is taken from our connection string. So we can go back to our database and click on connect and then hit on drivers and we want to copy this in. So let's go back and copy in our connection string and then don't forget to exchange out the password for your own. Once that's in, we can hit save. So now we are actually ready to see if our connection was successful. So we want to hit, let's go back to code. We want to hit the test button. So if it's the first time that you're hitting your test button, um, you're gonna actually need to name your event. So I can just say um, demo one, and then we can keep everything else the exact same and we can just hit save. Awesome. So now let's hit test. And as we can see, we have a response that says inserted. Let's just go and double check in Atlas and make sure that our document was actually inserted. Go over here, click on browse collections, scroll down. And as you can see, there is a database named test with a collection inside named test. And then there is a document with my first name and my last name that has been included. So congratulations, our connection works. Now we are ready to take things a step further and actually input a simple aggregation pipeline. So for our pipeline, we want to change our code to connect to our sample restaurants database and our restaurants collection. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be incorporating our aggregation pipeline to just find a sample size of five American cuisine restaurants that are located in Brooklyn, New York. 
So since we have our PyMongo dependency already downloaded, we can directly incorporate our aggregation pipeline into our code source. So let's change our Lambda function. So just open that up. And we want to incorporate just a, a pretty basic um, aggregation pipeline, just to show you all really how powerful AWS Lambda is and MongoDB is. So let's change the name of our database to be connecting to our sample restaurants database. So the sample restaurants database I will show you is right over here. So sample restaurants. And as you can see, for example, this one is a restaurant in Brooklyn that is American cuisine. And then it gives the name of the restaurant. So we want to find out of 25 over 25,000 documents, we want to get a sample size of just five that give us American restaurants in Brooklyn, New York. So let's get started and edit this file. First things first, I'm just going to change this to connect to make things a little bit more readable. And now we're going to change out the name of our database. This is going to be connect sample restaurants. And then collection is also going to be um, restaurants. Amazing. And then we can incorporate our aggregation pipeline. So we can delete this. And let me just make a comment here for clarity pipeline. So first, let's find American restaurants in Brooklyn that match what we want. So we can do a dollar sign match operator. We need to have our quotes and we want it to be borough, Brooklyn, and then we want to match it with cuisine and to show American perfect. And let's make sure we have the proper brackets at the end. Great. So that is our match operator. And now we only want to limit it to five. We don't want to find all the probably thousands um, of restaurants that hit our match. So we want to just limit it, use a limit operator just to five. So that's what that looks like. And then if you remember from here, we don't want to have all of this information. We want to read back everything. We just want to see the cuisine, the borough, and then let's also include the name just to make things easier for ourselves. So we can do that with a project operator. So that's going to be dollar sign project. And then we are going to do... So we don't want the ID, so we can actually zero the ID out. And then we do want the name, so I'm going to keep the name in as one. Um, we do want the borough, perfect. And then that one is going to be one as well. And we also want cuisine. Cuisine is going to be one. And then let's close that up. And then let's actually make sure we can see our, we can delete all of this. Let's make sure we can see our pipeline. Um, so result is equal to list, list collection dot aggregate pipeline. And then we want to print the results. So for restaurants in results, print restaurant. Perfect. Great. So now let's, as you can see, AWS Lambda lets us know that changes have not been deployed yet. So we can hit the deploy button first just to save everything, make sure everything's updated. We can go over here and click the test button. And great, we have five, we have a sample size of five restaurants that are located in Brooklyn, New York that 
have American food. This tutorial provided you with the hands-on experience to connect a MongoDB Atlas database to AWS Lambda. We also got an inside look on how to write to a cluster from Lambda, how to read back information from an aggregation pipeline, and how to properly configure our dependencies when using AWS Lambda. Hopefully now you are ready to take advantage of both AWS Lambda and MongoDB and create some amazing applications. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you would like to learn more, please check out our MongoDB Developer Center, our YouTube channel, and also our podcast. And I will link everything in the description below. Thank you so much for watching.